What are constraints in SQL? Constraints are rules we enforce on our table to specify the types of data that can be stored in our table. Constraints can be applied on either the column level or on the table level. In the previous video, we created a dog table. Let's take a look at that table again. I'll use the select statement to print out my dog table. Execute. Now, if you recall, we started by creating three columns, name, breed, and color. And then we added some rows of data into those columns. We used the alter command to add the age column and then added, I believe that's when we added Jack and Woofy. And then we added two more columns, microchip and eye color. Subsequently, we added more records. So what's the deal with this null that's showing in some of the cells? Now, clearly we know we didn't add some information and, and that's why we're not seeing anything. But what does it really mean when it says null? Null means unknown or missing value and it's not the same as zero or blank. So even though we don't have any value in those cells, it doesn't mean it's nothing. It just means that we don't have a value. We don't know the value. And there could be many reasons or situation in which we don't have the value within our table. So take for instance, sometimes you fill in forms and you ask for your name, you ask for your email and a bunch of other information. And then you also have a field to enter your age, which is optional. Some situations you might choose to enter your age. In some situations, for whatever reason, you may choose not to enter your, your age. Another reason why our table may contain null values is, let's say we have a company. And usually with our employees, you'd have information about our employees. You have the employee name. You have the, the dates that we hire. We, we have the email. But typically, we wouldn't have the date in which they leave the company, maybe that they retire. It is possible that they choose to go to another company because this is a future occurrence and we don't have that information or that data. Then that's going to be a null value because we just don't know what that date would be. And the data someone leaves a company obviously is an important one for record purposes. But if that event hasn't occurred yet, then we really don't have that information and we don't have that value. It doesn't mean that they won't retire at some point. It doesn't mean that they won't change jobs. It just means that we don't know as of yet. Another time that we could have null values within our database could be, uh, let's say we have a, a database that contains customer information and their sales and they buy different items off our, our, our website, for instance. It is possible, if it's not an active, active customer, it is possible that maybe they change their address and we're yet to update that information on our database. In that situation, we might also have a null value because we just have this client or this customer, but we don't have a current address for that customer. To further illustrate what this looks like, we are all familiar with a registration form, some sort of registration form. Could be a gym membership. You go online and you have to register for, let's say, a gym membership. It could be to use a service. Typically, when you try to register, they would have this form and you're supposed to enter information into that form. So you have your username, you enter a password or you like to access your account going forward. They like to know your first name, your last name, email, phone number, address, and, and then you can go ahead and register. Now, this is what you see on the front end, which is the graphic user interface. But on the back end, the company, the, let's say the gym that you're trying to register, they would have a database that actually contains a table and they could call it anything, but logically it will be a customer table. Now, so far we've been creating tables and 
that's exactly what's done on the back end. A uh, table would have been created at that you know that requires the username of the of the of the customer, the password, the first name, the last name, the email. And then when you go on this form and enter in your information, what you're doing is an insert query. Now, of course, you're not the one, you're not writing that query on the front end. What happens is that on the back end, there is an application that pretty much, pretty much picks all the values that you're inserting into the form and in putting that into a pre-structured or pre-made SQL insert command. Now I say SQL, it doesn't have to be SQL. There are other programming languages that does the same thing, but because we're studying SQL, this is really what's happening behind the scene. There is a table that's being created. You go online and you're now trying to register for a service, a gym membership. You enter your name, you enter your email and all of those information. And that information is then retrieved and then inserted using an SQL, um, uh, an insert statement into a table. So go ahead and copy this query and we'll paste that in our SQL server to actually see what that table looks like. All right, so let's go ahead and run this query, create the customer table. Then we'll insert a first row. Now we can select our table. See what that looks like. So we have our customer table. We have the customer's username, which is Sammy2020. We have the password. We have the first name, the last name, the user's email, as well as their telephone number. Now, when we create our table using the schema that we, we have here without any constraints, which is what I'm trying to show you, it means that if another customer decides to register and and for whatever reason they choose to only insert the, you know type in their first name and last name and choose not to have perhaps their username or you know create a password or an email address they just said you know what all i want to impute in this form is the is my first name and my last name now are they able to do that with the way the schema is created the way we created our customer table it is very possible that you know the the user chooses what they what information they impute so let's try and say we want to insert into that table just the first and last name so we go insert into customers and we only want to insert the first name and the last name that's all we're doing and the values we insert in would be let's say the first name is john and the last name is Michelle. Okay, that's all we choose to insert into that table. And let's another user comes and say, you know what? I'm just going to copy and paste and say, all I want to insert is my email address. So we say insert email, and we're just going to do it this. And then the email is Michelle at go.com and then runs that and we'll run that so let's take a look at what our table looks like select all from customers so now we have uh pretty much our database and our client table and it it, it doesn't really make sense it doesn't help us because yes the first customer we have all the information because usually when you register for a service you have to receive an email confirming that that registration was successfully completed 
um, it is possible that we have to issue a sort of like a membership card. We need your first name and your last name, but then the start customer only provided their email address. So how do we ensure that when the customer is entering the information on our website that they have to impute, uh, impute some information within all of, you know, specific boxes that we want. Usually we, we are given those visual cue to say you have this red asterisk, which is really just telling you that that is important. You have to put in that information and you'll find this in a lot of forms, but not all forms as that visual representation, or it's possible that not everyone knows what that actually means, but the, the red asterisk is really telling you that you have to impute that information. But how do we enforce that on the back end. The way we enforce that is by including a not null constraint when we create our table. Not null is used to ensure that a particular column does not have an unknown or missing value. Let's see how that looks like or how we create that schema. Go ahead and launch a new query box. I'll put a comment to say how to add a, a constraint to a not null constraint. Okay. So what we want to do is create a new table. So we'll go create table. We'll call this customer two. And what's the first value that would like to be imputed? We would like to have a username for all of our users. And that would be a VACA. And we'll restrict that to 20 characters. Now, assuming that we want to enforce the rule on username, we want to make sure that each user create a username. All we need to do is say not, not null. And that's all we need to do to enforce that when a user then go, goes to add information in the form that they have to impute an information in the username box. So we'll go comma. We know we want the first name and that's Vakar and we'll say 50. And again, we'll like to, I'm sure we need the name of all of our customers because we need to be able to address them by their names. And then we have a last name and we'll make that also compulsory. Car. And then 50. So change this to 50H. And again, we want this information, not null, comma. Let's say the next information is telephone number, and we're going to make that optional. This would be an integer, but we'll, we'll, we're fine with making that optional. And then let's say email will be Valker. Saints would need to send them confirmation of their registration. We need that to also, we need, that's also an important information that has to be inserted. So it would say not null, and we could just add another column, say age, and that will be int, and that would make optional. Then we end, we close our parentheses, and then with a semicolon. So what we're saying here is that we're creating a table in which we're enforcing a constraint, we're enforcing the not null constraints to ensure that when the user entered the information, that they have to enter their username, their first name, their last name, the telephone number is optional and the email address has to be entered. Age will be optional. When we go ahead and run this execute, so now our table has been created and we could just see what the blank table looks like. Customer two and let's see. And this is just a blank table because we haven't entered any information. So now let's say uh, a user decide to go to a website and only enter the first name and last name. Let's see if this is possible. 
So we we'll say insert into customer two. And this time we just insert the first name and last name. And we have the values as let's say our customer's name is Sheila. The last name is Adams. So this is all the information this user has decided to enter. And when we run this, we get an error message that says cannot insert the value null, value null into column username. That's because we expect the client, we expect the user to create a username. Now, of course, the user won't see this particular error message because it wouldn't make sense to the user. There are other ways, uh, other application that would be used to then uh, display in, within the graphic user interface the, to the user that, oh, you've missed the step. You need to create a username or you need to enter a password or you need to re-enter your password. But essentially, by creating our schema this way, we're enforcing the rule to ensure that specific field as to the information has to be entered into a specific field. Now, let's say we let's see if we insert into customer two. Now we're going to choose to insert username, first name, last name what all the information we'll ignore the telephone number for now just to to show you that would still be able to will now be able to to insert data into the into the page so we'll add email and we'll just insert all of that so the values would be username let's say it's uh, Sheila45, that will be the username, the first name, Sheila, last name will be Adams, and email will be Sheila Adams. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if this would work. And now we'd see that it says one row affected. If we check our customer table now we should see that we have that information so right now it's showing telephone null and age null and that's because when we created a constraint we allowed those two columns to be null we didn't stipulate that it has to be not null so now the user at they do have the option not to enter that information into into that column.